week on Thug Notes, we digging deep with Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This book's nameless narrator say he one sick motherfucker, but he ain't got the clap or anything like that. The only thing wrong with this fool is he's decked out with too much consciousness. And cause of that, this fool miserable and lonely as hell. After philosophizing about man, freedom, rationality, and other real talk, our 40 year old recluse start reminiscing about some shit that went down when he was in his 20s. Back in the day, the underground man decided to drop in on some old school homie named Zverkov, who bout to throw a banging party. Thing is, old Undy ain't tight with any of Zverkov's crew no more. In fact, when they see him lurking around the party, sipping too much scissor and acting a fool, they start thinking, what's this fool smoking? They even try to shake him before bringing their sausage fest to the local Poon Palace. But the narrator steps to these haters and tells them there anyway. When he arrives, he peeps some rank looking hoe named Lisa, takes her to a room, and shows her his Russian czar. Know what I'm saying? Now after doing the nasty, he tried to convince Lisa not to be turning tricks no more by getting all up in her head and messing with her heart. Later when the underground man kicking it back at his spot, Lisa rolls in all unannounced. She want to talk real with him, but all he want to do is get uppity and preach to her. But eventually, this fool can't keep his shit together and starts weeping. After tapping that ass one more time, he decides he going to toss her a couple dollar bills to prove that all that real talk was bullshit and that she ain't nothing but a dirty skank. But Lisa shows this fool who really got class and tosses that paper before she leaves. Realizing he acting a serious fool, he runs after Lisa to beg forgiveness, but she long gone. This book right here is widely considered the world's first existentialist novel. Years before Nietzsche was jiving his angsty shit, Dostoevsky was keeping it OG with the creation of the underground man. Ever since Don G hit the scene in 1864, righteous players been using the term underground to spin the face of the establishment and give all traditional forms of thought a big f you. Cause the underground man don't think like the rest of society. Everybody else is just fumble fing their way through life and never asking the big questions. But for our boy, that's the dank. And if that's the way you wanna roll, you gotta open up your eyes so wide to the world around you that it hurts. If you can do that, you playing a whole other game, B. That pain you feel when you beefing with reality and get your shit wrecked creates consciousness. Like our boys say, suffering is the sole origin of consciousness. But barking with the big dogs comes at a cost, hyperconsciousness. When you can see every angle to a question, you can get so overwhelmed that you don't know whether to go left or right. So instead of choosing a direction, our man doesn't do a damn thing. An intelligent man cannot become anything seriously, and it is only the fool who becomes anything. It ain't that this fool lazy, it ain't even that. Hyperconsciousness has made this cat straight up nothing. Our boy calls this conscious inertia. The real joke up in here is that consciousness only comes from the suffering you experience when trying to connect with other peeps. But when the big C comes creeping through your town, connecting with others becomes damn near impossible. There's the rub, blood. And if that seems like a whack paradox to you, it's all good, cause the underground man is a living, breathing paradox. Our unreliable narrator say he loved to be isolated, yet he jones it for human contact. He envies your everyday player, but he also proud not to be one. He suffers, yet he finds pleasure in it. All this mess making him so out of touch with society that lies and dreams are all he got. For we are all divorced from life. We are all cripples, every one of us, more or less. We are so divorced from it that we feel at once a sort of loathing for real life, and so cannot bear to be reminded of it. Why we have come almost to looking upon real life as an effort, almost as hard work, and we are all privately agreed that it's better in books. So escape this life, dive into a good book, and hit me up next week, homies. Peace.